Welcome everybody to Global Women Sports Radio, WWE First Pay-Per-View Preview. I, of course, am John, John Robleski of JohnJustBeat.com, and joining me is Candace Cordelia, wrestling entertainment reporter extraordinaire. How are you? I'm doing so good, Johnny. How's everything going? Everything is going good. I'm excited to get this going. We, you know, I'm excited that you joined the staff of Global Women Sports Radio. I know it's always good to have uh, more wrestling, um, you know, colleagues on board. And then, you know, we thought about doing a, a little video to see see how this goes. Exactly. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. And then let's let's just jump right in. The pay per view we're looking at is WrestleMania Backlash. Um, the day we're filming this is approximately a week before, so so far only five matches have been been announced. But we'll call it, we'll cover those five matches and see where it goes. The pay per view is May sixteenth, and the first match we have is is for the Universal Championship match. It was announced last night. It's Roman Reigns, the champ, versus the challenger Cesaro. Thoughts, predictions? Uh, this is a hard one because you know what? I've always been a Cesaro fan from the beginning. I love the fact that he's getting more opportunities now. And to be quite honest, I wasn't fully sold on Roman Reigns a couple of years ago, but now I'm loving this new side of Roman. I love his new entrance theme. Everything is really coming together for him. And him being with Heyman is just a power team. So you know what? I love Cesaro. I want him to win. I really do. But I just see Roman Reigns coming out victorious with this one. What do you think? Well, I agree with you. You know, it would make great video if we disagreed on everything. But we're going to start <laughs> off agreeing. Um, it's, you know, it's cool to see uh, Cesaro get his first shot, actually, at the title. But um, he's not going to win it in, in this match. I see, I see interference um, somehow with, with the Usos. Um, and, maybe on maybe on behalf of Reigns, maybe against Reigns, but I see them kind of you know schmozzing the match up and Roman Reigns coming out with the win. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you there with the Usos as well. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they come through and interfere and and cause some havoc. But even if they don't, if if they stay in the sidelines, I really also really do think that Roman he's just going to end up being victorious, being the winner in, out of all of this. So yeah. But it is a chance for Cesaro to come out looking strong. And that's that's kind of the important thing. As long as he comes out looking good, we're, we're all fine. Absolutely. Yeah, he, he's a consummate professional. Cesaro has been wrestling for so long. And I, I just can't see him looking weak, even if he does lose. So once again, I agree with you right there. Sounds good. Let's go to match two then. It, for the WWE Championship, it's a triple threat match. We have Bobby Lashley, the champ, taking on Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. Where, where do you see mm. this? You know what? Uh, <laughs> this is another one. I am not, and this might cause some, some controversy, I'm not the biggest Drew McIntyre fan. I'm just not. That's not to say that he's not an amazing wrestler, but I prefer to either see Bobby or Braun uh, come out winning this. Of course, I would love to see Bobby retain. Um, and I think he actually will, you know, this, this storyline has been, it's been a lot. It's, it's gone either way over the course of a few months, especially within, you know, this pandemic and, and we've seen it flip flopping. We've seen Bobby drew Bobby drew. And, and now we have Braun in the mix. I really think that there could be an upset potentially. However, for the story to progress, I, I feel as though Bobby is just going to retain for this one. Once again, I have to agree with you. I think Lashley all the way. Um, I'm not sure who he's going to pin. It, that's, that's kind of the interesting thing to, to try to make all, everybody look good. But, I, yeah, I think Bobby is, is way too strong right now. And I think the story needs to continue with some mix of the three of them going forward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I hope I don't offend any. I mean, if I do, it is what it is. I just am not the hugest Drew McIntyre fan. I just, well, that's just me. <laughs> well, no, you're entitled. You know, there's, hey, we've, all, we've all got wrestlers. I, we can look at a wrestler and say, I, I respect what he does in the ring, but yeah. I'm just not into the, the, you know, for whatever reason, whether it's personality, style, or the, you know, or the way they're pushing him. Who knows? Exactly, exactly. But yeah, that's that's my final thought. All right, then let's move on to the tag team match. 
It's the dirty dogs of Bobby Roode and uh, Dolph Ziggler are taking on the father-son team of, of uh, Rey Mysterio and his son, Dominic. Yeah. You know what? I have a feeling that Ray and Dom are going to scoop this one up. As weird as that might sound, I just feel that in terms of really pushing a swerve, um, you know, Ray and Dom, it's hard not to, at least in my opinion, it's hard not to like them. You know, the father-son team, Dominic is really coming into his own uh, as a wrestler. And it's kind of endearing to watch, at least for me. So I would honestly like to see Ray and Dom come out on top with this one. As much as I love Ziggler and Rude, I really do. You know, especially Bobby Rude. I, I've loved Rude since NXT. And it's really great seeing him have, you know, this championship. But I, I would like to see... Um, take this one as the father son and, and with that being said it would be awesome to see where that storyline goes with just having them be a, being a father son team so how do you feel about that I mean that's just my personal opinion well once again we are now three for three <laughs> I, I, see this, I see this totally going with the Mysterio uh, father son team I think they actually they should have done this at Wrestlemania on the bigger stage it's the first father son team that's, that would win a uh, tag team title together I think it's just got to go that way. Now, it, it might be a, a it might be a quick flip where they win it and then drop it right back, and, you know, either Monday or within a week or so. I don't know. Like you said, it'll be interesting to see where it goes if they win. But I definitely think they're going to win and come out with the titles. Yeah, yeah. And then the storyline, there's so many different ways that we could take this. And, and just beyond the legacy, I mean, we might see Aaliyah come back and, and they do something else with her. Maybe they'll bring you know, Dominic and Aaliyah's mom into the mix once again. I, there's so many ways that they can take this and really push this kind of like soap opera storyline that they've been building with this entire family. So I, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of hoping to see this. I think we will. Okay, now, since we are with uh, Global Woman Sports Radio, focusing on the women, let's, let's get to some of the women's, the two women's matches that were announced so far. We have the SmackDown Women's Championship match with... Uh, surprisingly, Bailey is taking on the champ, Bianca Belair. How do you see that one going? I mean, is this surprising, though? Bailey, you know, I I was hard-pressed not to see her, you know, for WrestleMania. I mean, she did have her interstitials, but I, I think this is well-earned. I love Bianca Belair, and this is another match that's really hard to choose because I love Bianca and Bailey. I think they're both at the top of their game. Bianca, her career is only going to go, you know, further up from here. Um, but I, I don't want her to lose. I don't want Bianca to lose. I really hope that she retains this, let her keep the championship for, for quite some time. But to have an opponent like Bailey uh, to face off with is phenomenal. I mean, I, I couldn't. I couldn't see, I mean, of course, there are other opponents that in the mix that they could throw in that would be equally excellent. But Bianca versus Bailey, I think, is, is fantastic. I think this is going to be a really awesome match. Well, I have to clarify. When I said surprising, I certainly meant no offense to Bailey. I, I agree with you. I think she's a fantastic <laughs> opponent. I just, I thought they were going to continue with Sasha uh, a little bit longer with Sasha versus Bianca. Um, True. But I, I do think Bianca is going to going to retain the title. But if I may ask you, you know, how do you, as a woman of color, how did you feel with the WrestleMania match with two women of color basically headlining that night? You get you know Sasha versus B, um, versus Bianca. Still, I still get chills. I, oh goodness, I mean, I, I'm not a long, long time wrestling fan like a lot of others are. But in the time span that I've been a fan and, and watched just the trajectory of Sasha's career and then having Bianca there and, and seeing them in the ring together for such a huge event like WrestleMania. I mean, it's historic and it really makes me feel hopeful for the future. And it, it it's something that needed to be done regardless. And, and I know some people might think, oh, well, this was just done, you know, to appease fans. No, they both earned it both fantastic, spectacular wrestlers. They're both, you know, hitting their stride even now. And it's, I just thinking about it, I'm just so proud. It makes me so happy to have seen that in my lifetime and to witness it. And I know that other women of color coming up who want to be wrestlers, that's going to be a match that they'll never forget, which really, I mean, that it, it, it's such a prideful moment. So thank you for asking. 
Well, no, I thought, I mean, obviously I'm not a woman, nor am I a, a person of color, but I thought, it, that's not obvious, but I thought that it was a fantastic match. And like you yeah. said, um, you know, some people, the critics will say, well, yeah, it was, you know, done to appease the fans. I don't care. I don't care, you know, I don't think it was, and, and either yeah. way, the women deserved it. But the bottom line is they were there and they performed and they put on one heck of a match. And regardless of how they got there, they made history. And, and mm-hmm. I think I, you're absolutely right. I think women and, and young young women, especially, and young women of color, even more, especially if I, I don't even know if that's correct to say, but, um, you know, that's going to be something that they're going to remember. And, that, you yeah. know, I just thought no matter how they got there, the fact that they got there just meant so much in history. I, I just thought it was a fantastic moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I want to see more. I want to see more between them. Hopefully we'll get a rematch down the line, which I think we will. I can see I that ab- happening. I absolutely think we will. Maybe, <laughs> you know, with no offense to Bailey, maybe she's just kind of a place setter and then um, Sasha will come back or maybe there'll be a three way. You know, Sasha's not done yet in this title picture. You know, eventually they'll, they'll push her off into a different feud, but she's not done. I, I don't think she's done chasing Bianca just yet. For sure. And, you know, Bailey and Bianca have that, or sorry, Bailey and Sasha have that history together, you know, that friendship gone sour. Right. So that storyline in and of itself, they can still push that. And, and who knows, maybe they'll become friends again. There, There's always that option for the two. So, yeah, I would love to see a three-way down the line if it came to that, for sure. I just think it's fantastic that not only are the women um, virtually um, – main eventing almost, but there's actually good storylines there. Like you said, you could, you could bring back Sasha and Bailey, that storyline, the storylines that are kind of interwoven that, and you could bring mm-hmm. them back. So I, I think it's fantastic that they actually have like legit storylines going into the matches and they're not just throwing in, you know? 100%. Well, the, the next match or the last match we're covering is the Raw Women's Championship, which is now a triple threat between Rhea Ripley as the champ Taking, mm. on As- taking on Asuka and the newly returned and uh, very angry Charlotte Flair. <laughs> you know, I absolutely love Charlotte. I mean, she's always been this heel, but now it's gone 1,000% further, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely like, seeing her just, you know, beat on that ref and, and what's happening with her as a character, and as a person. You know, I to be quite honest, I see Rhea Ripley retaining this as much as I mean, all three of these women are at the uh, once again at the top of their game. It can only get better from here. But Rhea, you know, just like Bianca, uh, still kind of fairly new at WWE, and and seeing just how far they've come and and being you know title holders. And, and seeing who they're facing against, it's like, oh my gosh, if this is what you guys are doing now, what are you going to do in like a year or two years down the line, much less five? So the fact that Rhea is facing Asuka and Charlotte, I, she, I mean, she's going to retain. I just see this happening 100%. But uh, it's going to be an awesome match. Her, Asuka, and Charlotte, it's, it's not There's not going to be a bad match at all. Now, this is the one that caused me a lot of, of stress. I, well, stress is <laughs> Wrong word, <laughs> but uh, confusion. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm so torn on this match. If I had to really bet, I would go with I would go with Ripley. If I, if you know, if push comes to shove, I'm going with Ripley. But I, I absolutely would not be surprised if if Charlotte came out with the win. Um, I think I think Asaka, Asuka. Why do I keep screwing up the name? I think she's going to take the loss either way. I don't see Charlotte getting pinned. I don't see Ripley getting pinned. Um, mm-hmm. But if yeah, uh, I will go with with Ripley. It'd be better if I went with Charlotte, just so we have one different in this whole thing. But if we all, if we, if it doesn't matter, you know, we're going to be honest about this, whether we agree or disagree. So I am going to go with Ripley. So uh, we are five for five on agreeing. Oh, who would have thought? That either means great minds think alike, or uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, we'll see next week what happens if we're if our five for five actually comes true and into fruition, you know, at Backlash. But uh, yeah, I you know, going back to Ripley and, and Charlotte, either way, either if Rhea retains or Charlotte, you know, takes the win, um, the storyline's gonna be. I hope it 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 goes into a different stratosphere, and 
Well, I, at least with if, with Charlotte, I know I just read an article uh, concerning Rhea stating that, you know, her confidence, she's building her confidence up. And I think with matches like this, her confidence will be boosted because she's working with, with women who can guide her and help her along the way. Uh, notwithstanding Charlotte, of course, um, yeah, she, I, if she, even if she takes this win, it's the storyline, it's, it's going to improve. I can see it improving. However, and it just popped into my head, you know, Charlotte is going to be filming uh, this Walking Tall movie. So I don't think that's starting, but with that in mind, I think this is why a lot of fans are thinking, well, you know, whether it's this match or another one in the near future, Charlotte's going to eventually kind of leave. Uh, regardless to go film. So whether it's this match, we'll see. If it's not, then, you know, it could be another one. And that only will make the storyline richer in WWE. So I think that's that's something to keep in mind. But now, I don't know how long you've been, been following wrestling. You, you said, you know, you're not a really long time. I'm a lot older than you. I've been following it for a lot longer. I don't ever remember. This is the cool part. I don't, well, I don't, going back to like the days of Trish Stratus, Lita, Mickey James, but I mean, that's been 15 years and the, the quality of women, the number of, of quality women right now, I think it's better than I've ever seen in my lifetime in the mm -hmm. WWE. And that, that's amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. And to, to be a fan now and to see, you know, all of this happening, I, I remember during the Divas era and, and bras, you know, you had the bras and panty matches of yore, and, and at that time, women were just relegated to one certain image, but I definitely remember, you know, watching wrestling just a little bit as a child, thinking, okay, this is probably the reason why my parents weren't really, you know, pushing me to watch this, because the, the women back then, or a majority, just weren't seen as athletes, but now it's just so rich with, with different characters, uh, we have more diversity. Um, I can only see it just getting better and better, but it really also boils down to the storylines and we have to really focus upon, you know, good writers, people coming in to really just make these storylines flourish on many different levels. So the athleticism is there, no doubt, but now it's all about, you know, just making sure the creative is there for these women. And, you know, a lot of these women, especially Carmella recently, she's been, you know, voicing out her concern to have more women featured, have more storylines feature i think that's super important so you know these women are great at what they do they are super talented but i personally i need to see the storylines woven in i need like i need to see different richer storylines we're competing with television and film we're competing with, with you know netflix and and paramount plus and hulu so you know we gotta get these storylines to keep them pumping so that's that's my wish going in well speaking of storylines before we wrap this up the, the Alexa Bliss storyline, do you see any of that coming into the pay-per-view? Wow. Another one. I really like what, they, what they've been doing. I know it might be running a little stale, but um, because it's, she's just been sitting in this new newfound character for quite some time. But I think... I, I don't know if I want to see want to see it coming into backlash. I think we can sit back for a minute and just let it breathe. <laughs> I think she's yeah. doing an amazing job week by week with this, even with the you know the brief the brief uh, scenes that she's been having. Not even matches, just the scenes alone are just I love it. I really think she's having fun with this, but I don't necessarily need to see Alexa Bliss at backlash. I think we can just let it sit, let it chill, marinate, <laughs> let the others <laughs> do what they do. And then bring it back, you know, going into the week. So, yeah, that's my take on it. I think she might interfere in, in one of the matches because she she said that you know the uh, Lily's got her eyes set on someone, and I think it I think her eyes might be set on somebody. And, and I'm looking at the triple threat match, or maybe Bailey. Mm. I don't know, mm. but, but you know, I could be real. This is why we watch the pay per view to find out. Yeah. That would be intriguing. You know, I miss seeing her with Nikki Cross. I really want, I really want that storyline to come back. And my hope, you know, I don't know if it'll happen, but I kind of want Alexa at some point to go back to her former self and to have Nikki be the catalyst for that. I think that would be so, so lovely because they had a really great friendship. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of wishing and hoping that that comes back in some way. And I miss seeing Nikki Cross on TV. I want to see her, you know, come back. So. 
that's just my personal <laughs> whole bucket but, list. Yeah. But, I mean, how cool is that though, that we have so many women on the cards and we have so many women that aren't even on TV, but can actually be because it, it, it's such a rich roster right now. It's amazing to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even with, with the, the women that were recently let go, um, who knows what's going to happen. They have so many others hanging out when they're training at the PC and in NXT as well. It, there's a lot to consider. A lot of great female athletes that are, are just waiting and hungry to, to get in the ring and to, you know, even be called up or to, you know, maybe not be called up, just stay in NXT and just hang yeah. out and do what they do there. So there's so many different ways to go about this. And I agree with you. It's the, the sky's the limit. We can only see what will happen next. But yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot in store. I feel. It's a great time for women's wrestling and it's a great time for women's wrestling fans. Like yeah. Us. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. think that, I think that wraps it up for our WWE pay-per-view preview show, our first one. I enjoyed it. I had a good time with you. I, I hope our fans enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Yes. Oh, this was so great. For our first, you know, talk one-on-one, even though it's through Skype, I this went off without a hitch. So I'm really amped to do this again with you, Johnny. I Please, by all means, <laughs> if you want to invite me back, that would be great. Oh, absolutely. You're my tag team partner. Absolutely. So for, for, for Candace Cordelia and I, of course, am John G. We're wishing everybody fun. Watch the wrestling pay per view and see how we did. Although we agreed on all five matches, we'll see how we did. Absolutely. I can't wait, Johnny. And guys, enjoy the show. Have fun. Let us know your thoughts. You got it. You heard it from the wrestling expert. Candace, thank you very much for your time, and we'll do it again soon. 100%. I would love that. Thanks. <laughs>